In part four, we dealt with mostly event spaces that were related to categorical variables, whether someone ate breakfast or didn't eat breakfast, whether all of the kittens that were selected were black or none of them were black. So we're dealing with categories. In part five, we're going to start looking at how we deal with quantitative random variables. What if something is numeric? Um, so if we're talking about our quantitative variables, we have to be able to divide them into the two main categories, discrete and continuous, because those will have very different ways to handle them. So as a reminder, a discrete variable can take any one of a collection of points on a number line. So if you were thinking about what this looks like visually, you have your number line, and there are just certain numbers that are possible. You can't have any of the values between. So a lot of times we're talking about like number of people in a family, or if we're talking about the number of kittens selected when we're choosing them with or without replacement out of a bag. The least number of kittens that you can have that are black is zero. You could have one, two, three, right? Depending on how many kittens that you're selecting. So this would be discrete. It's not possible to get one and a half kittens. It's not possible to have two and a half people in your family. Uh, this is very different than a continuous random variable, which will be a lot more tricky to deal with. For a continuous random variable, there is some value, right? That's possible, say zero. And then anything between zero and some other value are possible. So let's say this is like our test scores. Not that I let everybody get fractional points, but if I did, you could see that it might be possible to have anything between zero and 100. So this would have a very different way. We couldn't write out every possibility. Instead, we'd have to come up with some other way to handle it, which is what we'll deal with next week in week eight. All right, so first example here just has us break down if something is discrete or continuous. We can decide what type of method to use. Um, our first question says the uh, number of traffic citations issued by Highway Patrol in a particular county on a given day. So take a moment, decide whether this is discrete or continuous. Should have decided that this thing was discrete, right? The number of traffic citations puts us in this sort of category here where you can't have half of a traffic citation on a particular day. Whereas B, the time it takes to fly from New York City to San Diego, this would be continuous, right? There's some lower bound on the possible amount of time it would take to fly between New York and San Diego and some upper bound and anything in between that, especially if you had something that did a really good job of measuring would be the situation. So discrete and continuous. Week seven, we're just dealing with discrete data or discrete, yeah, discrete random variables.